Every dog needs to be able to stay home alone for at least a short period of time. Ideally, you wanna start the day you bring your dog home, whether it's as a puppy or as a young adult or as an older dog that you've adopted. You wanna make sure that your dog has been exercised so that they're physically tired. You wanna leave them with something that's going to occupy them and keep them interested. So whether that's a raw bone or a bully stick, a Kong stuffed with canned food and frozen or with raw food so that your dog's got something to occupy them. You're gonna leave for a very, very short period of time and then come back. What you're looking for is for your dog to be relaxed and calm while you're away. In essence, you're preventing separation anxiety before it happens. When your dog has separation anxiety, it means that they're so stressed out that they're offering behaviors that they really don't have any control over, whether that's incessant barking, self-mutilation, digging, destroying objects. You want to treat the reasons why your dog is anxious and work through that rather than punishing the behaviors that they're presenting. It's something where your dog isn't doing it to be spiteful, they're not doing it to be dominant, they're doing it because they're genuinely stressed out and you want to recognize that as part of your training. It's not always going to be that easy. Some dogs are predisposed to separation anxiety. Some dogs are going to be adopted and come into your home with some elements of separation anxiety already there. If that's the case, you're gonna work on desensitizing your dog to gradually leaving them alone for longer periods of time. For some dogs, you're gonna to need to work directly with a trainer or behaviorist and have one-on-one -on -one lessons, starting possibly with steps as small as being able to pick up your keys without it stressing out your dog, progressing to picking up your keys, putting on your shoes, so that your dog is able to learn to relax and anticipate your leaving as a positive thing rather than as a negative thing. For some dogs, having the companionship of another animal will reduce or eliminate their separation anxiety. It's not a guarantee that it will work, especially if the dog is incredibly focused on you as a person and it's missing your companionship as opposed to another animal. You wanna make sure that you really truly want a second dog before you consider bringing another animal into your home. It may be that you can borrow a dog from a friend or a family member to see if that helps your dog's anxiety level before you commit to adding another animal to your home. When you're working with your dog that's first come into your home, you wanna make sure that your comings and goings are a non-event for your dog. So when you return home, you're going to ignore your dog until they're settled down and relaxed so that you're not reinforcing them for bouncing and being excited. The same way when you're leaving your house, you wanna be very matter of fact and relaxed about it so that your departure is not a big event for your dog either. For dogs with severe levels of separation anxiety, you should consult with your vet, ideally a vet who is also a specialist in behavior, to consider pharmaceutical help for your dogs. For some dogs, their anxiety is so extreme that they need the help of drugs to get them to a point where they're able to settle and learn, to take them below threshold so that you can start doing some counter conditioning related to separation anxiety. It doesn't mean that your dog is going to have to be on drugs for the rest of their life. It might, it might mean that there's a lower dose that you can use long term. The most important thing is your dog's quality of life. Separation anxiety is a very common behavior problem and it is also very difficult to treat. You wanna make sure that you're working with a dog trainer and with your vet to make sure that you're doing the very best you can for your dog.